exciting to see the harness, you know, legacy continue and, you know, just proud to see your little brother get some, uh, you know, accomplish his goals. Yeah, you know, it's really exciting to see Pearson go play college football and, and uh, to be a full ride athlete, you know, going to St. Francis, you know, with a, you know, it's a great program. They, ha they have a great track record. Uh, Kevin Donnelly's a great coach and, and uh, you know, I have nothing but confidence in them. And, and, it's, and it's awesome because they're close to home. So a lot of fans and, you know, friends and family can go and watch him and support him. So uh, nothing but excitement and I'm very proud of him. It's going to be some late Friday nights, early Saturday mornings, you know, just to get down to those games. Um, hey, I know this past season, you know, you kind of had, you know, some changes finally. Um, you know, the in-state team, the team that drafted you kind of let you go, went to the Vikings. Just what was, you know, what was 2014 like for you? Uh, 2014 was a roller coaster type of year. You know, you're with the Colts and, and you think you might have a future with them. And, uh, you know, it's a business. You know, they, they released me and uh, it is what it is. You have to be able to separate, you know, emotion from the professional aspect. And, um, and then the Vikings picked me up, and, uh, and that was great. And then I got hurt. So, you know, it's just up and down, up and down. But um, all great experiences. I wouldn't trade in for anything. And, uh, you know, currently a free agent. We'll see what happens. Talk about your injury a little bit, because I, I don't remember a whole lot about that. But I do remember seeing, you know, you know active on the sidelines, all, you know, a lot with the Vikings this past season. Yeah, I hurt my foot um, actually in practice. And, and just because, you know, the NFL is a business, they had to bring another guy in. And uh, I was put on, put on IR, injured reserve. And, and after about six weeks, they released me. And uh, again, it's just it's a business decision. So, um, you know, it is what it is. And uh, like I said, great experience. I got to meet some new people. You know, continue to create the network, and uh, and, and build some really positive relationships. Foot good to go now. I'm good to go. I'm 100. percent All right. You know, uh, when I talk to mom, you know, mom knows best. You know what? I know she says there's a couple teams in the works. So kind of, what do you think this year holds for you? Yeah. You know, right now, I understand. You know, my priority. I'm a, I'm a third string quarterback you know, coming off an injury. So with the draft and free agency coming up and all those things, uh, probably not gonna happen right away. You know, you gotta play the waiting game. And, and for me, I just gotta do my due diligence and, and train every day and throw and, and just be ready for that opportunity when it happens. I know the league's doing a new thing this year. They have, you know, there's a rookie combine, you know, just down the road in Indy, but there's the, that veterans combine now over in Arizona. I think there's a limited amount of slots. I'm not sure if you can get into that. I can't remember when it is, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's that kind of a goal trying to get to that to kind of, help get you more exposure to other teams? I was actually invited uh, to the Vet Combine. Actually, I just found out a couple days ago, and I can't go because um, we have a family vacation planned. And, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, I talk to my agent, and we feel as if that we don't need to be there. Um, you know, I have 12 games of preseason film available for teams to see, so they know what kind of player I am, and, uh, and we're okay with that. Do you know why they said they want to pick you? Just because this is a new system, just kind of curious why. You know, I'm, not, I'm trying to get an idea of kind of who they want to get out there to Arizona. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure because there's only a certain amount of slots available. And, and I think it's guys that are, you know, maybe in between, you know, kind of your mid-20s to early 30s and um, guys that are fighting to get back in. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know the parameters, though, to be, to be honest. Okay, that's fine. Hey, um... You know, I know everyone's going to root on for you, but, you know, a lot of people here, if you're against them in the Super Bowl, they might be, uh, you know, against the Colts in the Super Bowl, they might still cheer on Indy. So I'm going to ask a Colts question here. You know, do you feel like, did you did you learn anything from Andrew Luck over those past two years? I mean, that might, you know, how he just um, does drills, how he practices, how he carries himself to kind of help you, you think, you know, land that next gig? Yeah, you know, Andrew's one of my closest friends, but uh, watching him as a professional is, is really, you know, kind of invaluable because, um, he's just he, he's just on top of everything. He's a great leader and uh, just a student of the game. He loves to ask questions. He wants to know why things happen, not just when or what you know or where or how. He wants to know why teams are doing what they do. And um, you know, it's just it's, it's awesome to see his work ethic and and it's fun to push him and then he pushes me. And um, so yeah, I've learned so much from him. You guys still stay in touch? I take it. Yeah, we stay in touch all the time. Any surprise that you know they were one of the last four teams this year? No, no, absolutely not. I think, uh, you know, they're, they're just getting better every year and, and uh, eventually they'll get by the Patriots, but uh, it takes time and, you know, they're learning every time, you know, and, uh, and they'll be just fine. You know, we have a busy night uh, with basketball and everything, so we want to make sure we got here this morning, but can you talk about kind of why you wanted to, you know, team up with the uh, Forgotten Children Worldwide uh, this weekend? Yeah, you know, I just, I love their, their vision, you know, helping children around the world and, uh, and even human trafficking. Um, you know, I, I just, and on top of that, they're from my community and, uh, and I just love the people. I love what they stand for. Um, I love giving back any way I can. And this is just another aspect, but they stand for what's right in this world. And uh, a lot of times you see in the papers, bad news. I mean, this is one of the good stories and, uh, and it needs to be out there more often. 
And I uh, just, you know, I love to be a part of it. And, you know, it's just, it really is, it's more beneficial for me than it is for them, you know. So I'm learning from this. And uh, you know, I, I just can't, you know, I can't mimic that experience that I will get tonight. And I guess this morning is kind of like the party, a couple hours, you know, everyone just got to say hi and meet you. But tonight, I mean, I know you're probably speaking. Do you, is it just kind of about, about yourself or is it more about kind of why you see this as a good, um, good organization? Yeah, so tonight I'm going to be speaking about leaving a legacy. And, uh, and I think it kind of marries up perfectly. I'm going to talk about, you know, how I've seen people leave a legacy in my life. Um, guys like my father, uh, Matt Hasselbeck with the Indianapolis Colts, who's just a phenomenal person. But then um, I'm going to talk about, you know, how can others leave a legacy. And then I'm going to connect that with forgotten children. You know, I, I think people can leave a legacy, whether it's financially, um, with products, with their time. And, and I think it just all marries up together well. And, um, and, and then I'm going to incorporate some funny stories and things like that, some things I've learned along the way. And uh, it'll just be a really fun evening.